apa-apa. How do we go forward from here? What does it look like without the quarterback? They killed him, baby. They fucking killed him. I feel like I was kind of refusing to believe it on some level because it feels like for the entire show, John Dutton has like teetered on this edge. He's had so many threats against him. He's had so many enemies. And every time he has pulled through. So I think in many ways, I refused to believe. Do you think that the fans have a different emotional state because they've waited so long for this and then all of a sudden it's like, damn, first, first essential episode out of the gate. It does come at you hard. So much of the show has been about resisting change, resisting the future. John Dutton's own personal mission has been to preserve this ranch at all costs against the march of progress. Progress doesn't need your permission. Yeah, in this valley it does. Right out of the gate, first episode, you've lost that fight. But we still have a chance to, to preserve it. We're not sure how it's gonna play out. It's definitely the first domino, but there is, uh, I, I feel like there's still some hope. John was like the linchpin for everybody, like all the kids in the family, to just continue to fight and hold on because it's like they all don't really want to do the ranch life. I feel like he was such a, a monolith in that, right? Like even for Jamie, it was like his aspirations in life were his father having to acknowledge the fact that like, you beat me and now that's gone. So I think it'll be really interesting to kind of see like as the season goes on, him not being there, like what are those things that everyone is now fighting against and sure. for, right? What's the point? Yeah, like what, are, like, what is this now? I think everyone's gonna have to ask themselves that question. It just feels to me like this never would have happened if John was still on the ranch. Mm -hmm. right. And for all of these characters feeling this kind of helplessness, he's outside of this like, yeah. Kind of protective, yeah, safe. The fortress. The fortress, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's outside the castle You're walls. You're vulnerable. Yeah. That oh, would not God. have been able to have been Don't accomplished. Because they've yeah. tried it. That's the thing. There have been right, these assaults right. on the ranch. Yeah. And John's loyal soldiers on mm -hmm. the ranch have, have saved him, protected him. Thank you for protecting this place, protecting my family. We're watching these characters grappling with the inconceivable especially because they weren't there. Mm -hmm. This painful feeling of like the uncertainty, the ambiguity of somebody, the person you love most in the world just disappearing mm -hmm. and you weren't there. Amidst all this chaos and tragedy, everyone has to go to their strength source to get by. And so obviously having Beth and Rip together, you know, they're a, a complete pair. And without him, I don't know that she could get through this. You know, she, there's been a lot of tragedy and a lot of loss, uh, especially in her background. But the final loss of losing her father, like she would, doesn't really have a point to go on without him. So Rip, I think, gives her a reason to exist. I totally agree. And in a really beautiful way, I think from the moment she learns he's dead, she's combining coping with her grief and the kind of Beth business mode that we've seen so many times. She's like, I'm gonna fucking figure this out. I'm gonna get revenge. We're gonna fight. Like she is sort of resisting that grief and Rip comes back and it feels like she can now safely grieve because he will be the kind of, he's her fortress, you know, he's her Dutton Ranch. Beth and Casey, they kind of start to get this information. I think Beth kind of knew early on that it's not really in my dad's personality to go and kill himself. You I know? think it's interesting that like the audience can put these pieces together in the story tone. They know, and the, but the characters right. don't. So the, right. the, our audience is ahead of us, waiting for them to like get To figure it, it out, Yeah, right. so we're gonna get to watch, as audience members, get to watch them go through the process of arriving at, at that destination the that they're like they've some, seen. Yes, yeah. and, and them going like, come on, it's right in front of you. You can see, and even Casey's like, yeah, I don't think, I don't think Jamie has it in him. I don't know how he could do it. I don't know how he would do it. Mm. Uh, and, and have those So it's an interesting it. way to, to tell the narrative. Go look him in the eye if you have to, Casey. Then come home and help me decide how to kill him. Travis give you the day off? Well, technically you fired me, but 
fires me a couple of times a week, so. So at the last episode that we remember, the bunkhouse was split in half, and you guys are heading down to now meet Jimmy at the Four Sixes. And, you know, from the last couple of episodes, not having that kind of camaraderie with that bunkhouse, and then all of a sudden, the wagon kind of pulls around and all these characters, you know, pop out. What was that like for you? When you guys first see me, no hug? No fanfare. It's no wave? Like, hey. It's been a minute. We just start talking shit about you. Yeah, I feel like you guys spend like uh, a couple of minutes calling me a few choice words. This ranch must have one of those hire the handicap programs. Employment for the disabled. I feel like if Colby was there, there would have been a little more warmth. 100%. Was, yeah. Colby's all about warmth. Colby's all about warmth. Well, there's also a formation of, of the men in the, in the herd, so I it's know. like we can't just, you know, break. Exactly. To go you're over holding and have up a hug. all these cattle. It's Everybody's like, got their place. Here's our position. Like, we yeah. know you're over there. But you could probably wave. Could have. Yeah, I could yell out from across oh. 100 yards What's up? Hey! Missed you. How are you? <laughs> How was your birthday last week? <laughs> you two stupid motherfuckers showed up. Y'all were fucking embarrassing yourselves. When you're on the Yellowstone Ranch, you can't kind of have this almost like messing around as long as the job is getting done. But when you're in a different environment, there's laws to that universe that it's like, that doesn't apply there. Watching the way that you guys handled yourselves down there made me so proud of us as a cast. That was our goal, because we had heard and seen what it was like, how you behave and what the procedure is. And so we knew we had a lot to live up to. We're lucky because the whole time we've had our ringers, we have our Jake Ream, we've got our Ethan Lee, mm. we've got our Ryan Bingham, we've got our 4 J Smith, we have our ringers. But it's a little different when you're trying to integrate into this real ranch with a 100 year history of excellence in the thing that we've been pretending to do for about seven years. <laughs> I think we did pretty good. Good afternoon, sir. Pleasure to meet you. My name's Grant. I highly doubt that. Who's well, Grant to you? What I think is amazing is over the course of these seasons of Yellowstone, we've seen different levels of threats. Started out with Dan Jenkins. He wants to build like a subdivision, right? That doesn't last so long. <laughs> then we're expanding a little. You know, we've had militias hired to try to kill us. We've had all sorts of different levels of contract killers come after John Dutton. And now the level at which the Dutton's enemies are playing is very, very high. We're talking about building an airport. We're talking about changing the economy of the state forever. You said it yourself. You turn it into Park City, well, this is Park City. We're facing an enemy that is like the most evolved coolest, most calculated version of this corporate threat. Mm. When did you bug his house? Before we take on a new assignment, we make certain to protect ourselves. Should we watch the whole thing? And they're the ones that get the job done. Yeah, when you have massive corporations, they're gonna get their way one way or the other. Like, they're looking at the books of the ranch, and they know that at the end of the day, they're gonna win. It just depends on how you want it to look. Can you just mimic, like, a heart attack? We could. I mean, I imagine this kind of, the fee for this, the way they they, got deep they say how they do it. Yeah. Like, how much does that cost? Market equities for them, it's nothing. Yeah, it's just, it's an investment, right? Yeah, They're gonna spend this to yeah. make this. Yeah. The, the ambiguity of it is what is so frightening, and it's also what makes it an incredibly difficult crime to solve. What exactly do you expect to find in there? Audio recording devices, location beacons. No, it's like there's no paper trail. Even if they know who did it, how are you gonna prove it? I feel like the fact that we don't even know the name of the operation that Sarah goes to to get this done. I wouldn't think they have a name. Exactly, that's the most chilling thing. You know what I mean? Like the most dangerous people in the world, you don't even know their sure. name because you don't know they exist. Yes. Yeah, they're probably not on LinkedIn. I would imagine, right? They're probably not on like a LinkedIn. But like there's like there is like the business LinkedIn that you can do, so maybe they're on like the premium yeah, LinkedIn. You, the, like, yeah, yeah. you need to pay for that. Yeah, because yeah, there's a premium subscription. LinkedIn that yeah, you can, yeah. that you can then do you can that. find Lions don't die of old age. Lions die in the jaws of younger lions, and you are the younger lion. This is your kingdom now. Is Jamie to blame for, you know, for all of this? 
everybody around him wanted this and he became kind of like the linchpin to make it all acceptable. They played on his turbulent relationship, you know, with John, of feeding him into this so that he can continue to kind of get him to the ledge. He's jealous of you, Jamie, and he's scared of you. Looking at his past, do we feel bad for Jamie at all? Like, do you buy his tears? I do think it's really interesting that his first response to John Dutton's passing is grief. Mm -hmm. Right, it does. I think that does speak volumes. Mm -hmm. Their relationship has been very complicated for a long time. If you betray me again, you're dead to me, son. You understand? And there's a sort of finality to this. I don't think that he necessarily knew what he was signing up for. This is what you said that you wanted. I said it, I did, and then. And then we never discussed it again. There's been a lot of different kinds of warfare between the two of them. After everything I've done for you! But this is like obviously an escalation far beyond anything in the past. What if I want to play offense? There are companies, yeah. I think he is complicit in JD's death, but I think he would never be the one to pick up the phone in order to hit. Maybe some part of him wanted it, some part of him certainly didn't. I think of all the characters on the show, mm. Jamie contains multitudes. I thought he did it because of me. I don't think that this w was the goal for Jamie ever. And he's just gonna be this tortured soul forever living under the, the thumb of his father, but I don't believe that he could have ever or wanted this to happen or could have made it. I completely agree. I feel like what he wanted was John Dutton's love. I'm surprised you're here. We wouldn't miss this for the world. How he was gonna get John Dutton's love became more and more complicated. Okay, I'm gonna beat him in the gubernatorial race. Yeah, okay, to I'm gonna him. take his ranch yeah, away. It's all about he wants the, his respect. That, that's something that he's gonna be tortured with because he wanted that love and respect, but he knew that that was only gonna come from actually beating him. Yeah. Like actually beating him in a race, actually being right. You know, and now he's never even gonna get that. He's never gonna get his father to sit there and say, well done, son, yes. like, you did the it, game is like, over. you beat me. He's never gonna have that. Maybe. That will torture him for Forever. the rest of his Forever. life. That's worse than death. That would be why someone like him would kill would, himself. Would kill himself. I cannot be fixed. He came pretty close. JD saved his life at that time, mm -hmm. which is ironic. It is my duty to inform you that the 26th governor, my father,